Hi guys, so in this video we are going to talk about fold expressions. So fold expressions were introduced in C++17 and they are super useful. I mean they help you create very concise code. And uh, so before jumping into what fold expressions are, what kind of problems they can solve, where they can be used, let us, let's actually see uh, why they were actually introduced in C++. Like uh, how do they help you, you know, create concise code. So let's say I give you a problem and the problem is that uh, I want you to create a function, let's say add. and it can accept any number of arguments. I mean, the user, he can, you know, pass any number of arguments to that add function and the maybe arguments can be of any type as well. And what you need to do is basically you need to return the result of addition of all those argument values. Okay, let's say if all those arguments were integers, then you should be able, your add function should retain return the sum of those integers. If they were maybe floating point numbers, then of course, the sum of all those floating point numbers, if they were string, then of then the add function like adding the strings mean concatenating all the strings so that add function should be able to basically concatenate all the past strings to it and return the result of it so what would be the way to solve that problem basically so uh, so basically this is our add function again as you can see i am passing it uh, any number of arguments like i have passed it four integers in here i have passed it 10 integers here i have passed it three strings right here i have passed it only one integer so basically i want the result of addition of all of them right so the way to create that add function is something like this without using folder expressions of course is that you create a uh, templated add function because you want to be able to pass any type of arguments to that this add function so this template basically it has a first argument and it accepts a parameter pack as well okay so this parameter pack is used to pass any number of arguments now uh, here it is accepting the first argument and the rest of the arguments are passed as a parameter pack right so what we basically do is that uh, we use the uh, recursion so what we are going to do is that we are going to call this add function on all the remaining arguments and whatever the result is returned to us we will add the value of this first argument to it and return the final result okay so basically recursion is the way to solve it and of course when you are going to re use recursion you need a termination condition as well so the termination condition is this another add function which is basically a partial specialization of the template where uh, if you have only single argument basically if you call the add function with just a single argument you just return that argument okay so this is going to be our termination condition in the recursion so when i run this code you can see uh, we'll get the output i mean uh, for this one we are i'm getting the sum of one two three four which is ten for here i'm getting the sum of first 10 natural numbers which is 55 here i have i am concatenating these three strings so i am getting this right similarly for line number 24 where we are calling add with just a single integer one we are i am just getting the result one okay so this is the way to solve it and in case you uh, basically to help you visualize how it would have worked let me show you on here so this is what your so this is our code like i have the same add function the templated add function and i'm calling it with four arguments okay so what magic did compiler do behind the scenes so what it did was this how it basically you know expanded our templates how it instantiated our templates how our recursion was expanded so to help you visualize this this is actually what happened behind the scenes so the compiler created an add function which accepts four integers here are four four integers the first argument and the rest argument one two three right so you can see what it compiler is doing it it is calling this add function now with the remaining three arguments because here in my code what i was doing i was calling the add functions with the remaining arguments and whatever the result was returned by it i was adding the first argument to it so the compiler is also doing the same thing now when compiler is calling this add function with these three arguments the function which will be called is the add function which accepts three arguments so compiler must have inst instantiated that as well and this is the that instantiation okay so here we have our add function which again accepts our first argument and the remaining two arguments again compiler is recursing on it it is calling the add with the remaining two arguments now this will uh, call the add function which accepts two arguments and this is that add function it accepts two arguments and what it is again doing it is recursing again it is calling add now with just one uh, sorry uh, this is that function it is this is the add function which is accepting two arguments and the compiler what it is doing it is basically recursing again and it is calling add with the remaining arguments and this time the remaining arguments passed to this add function is like there is only one argument which is being passed so our this specialization would be triggered and 
hence this function would be called and when this is called like you can see that the recursion stack would unwind and that is how eventually this uh, we get the result i mean this is how this is the magic which compiler is doing behind the scenes so now the thing is that uh, as you can see like uh, usually when programmers had to create such functionalities you know maybe create a function which accepts any number of arguments and does something on it uh, this was a common practice i mean uh, you use the recursion and you use the concept of I mean, with recursion, you need a termination condition. So you need a partial specialization of the template, which can help you terminate the recursion. So, I mean, C++ community realized that and hence they saw that this was kind of a recurring problem, recurring code, a lot of boilerplate code was required for it. So they created a concise format for it, which is called fold expression. I mean, fold expression can help you solve these kind of problems. So with fold expression, if I had to solve, I mean, if I had to again, create the same kind of add function, all I have to do is this, what I do, is I have this is our add function which accepts again a parameter pack basically you can pass it this we are pass, giving it a parameter pack because we want to pass it any number of arguments right and all I am doing is this I mean so this is the thing which I have highlighted on line number five is actually the syntax of fold expression okay so to give you a formal uh, you know explanation of this so basically Fold expression can be written in these four forms, like this is the syntax. Uh, the, you have the expression inside this opening and closing parenthesis. Again, these parentheses are important for fold expressions. You have this pack, you have the operator, and then you have these three dots. Okay, so what does it signify? So the pack here is the unexpanded parameter pack. Okay, as I mentioned that in this add function, we are accepting a parameter pack, right? So the pack in that fold expression is this args the unexpanded parameter pack okay then you have the operator now the operator can be any binary operator i mean you can read on cpp reference the fold expression accept these three these 32 binary operators like plus minus multiplication divide logical operators like and or or right and then you have these three dots okay so as you can see like all you have to do is basically use this syntax i mean if with fold expression the problem which i had highlighted that you want a function which can accept any number of arguments of any type and it should return the addition of them so this is the way to implement it using fold expressions now let me actually explain what happens so what does this syntax means okay so this syntax basically means that your fold expression would be uh, expanded like this i mean this is called unary unary right left unary right fold expression so what it means that your expression would be expanded something like this uh, you would have something like this was the nth argument okay then this was the n minus one argument then and like similarly like this and then you eventually have something like this that pack two plus pack one okay so this is what uh, the unary right fold expression means that is you will basically start your addition from the right hand side i mean to give you a better explanation of this let's see what compiler did i mean what magic did compiler did behind the scene okay so when we had passed the four arguments to it so this is how compiler expanded our uh, add function it this is add function which accepts four arguments argument 0 1 2 3 and this is what happened okay you can see like first argument 2 and 3 are added then whatever the, is the result it is added to argument 1 and then whatever is the result it is added to argument 0 okay so this is what you call a unary right fold expression why unary right fold expression because the addition is starting from the right hand side right and uh, similarly you have the other syntax which i showed you this is the unary left fold expression so like to remember which one is right which one is left all you have to remember is that where are these three dots placed if these three dots are on right side then it is a right fold expression if it if they are on left side then it is a left fold expression okay so let me show you if i would replace the positioning of these dots and arcs what would happen okay so if I did this and if I ran it, you will see that the fold expression would be expanded from the left hand side. So see, this is what the compiler created. Now the addition is starting from the left hand side, like arg zero and one are added first, then whatever is the result is added to arguments two, then whatever is the result of this expression is eventually added to arguments three and it is re returned. Okay, so this is how uh, the 
unary left fold expression works now you have another uh, syntax like this one so what this is so this again the parameter pa pack is same it is the unexpanded parameter pack operate this is operator these are three dots again your binary operator and this in it is kind of an expression okay any initial expression for example why would you use this and this time like when you use this syntax so which one is right and left fold expression so depending on the positioning of init okay if this initial expression if this is placed on the right side then it is a binary right fold expression if this is placed on the left side so this is a binary left fold expression okay again these two are unary fold expressions and these two are binary fold expressions which one is left and right in unary fold expression is determined by the positioning of these three dots and which one is left or right fold expression is is determined in binary fold expression by the positioning of this initial expression so why would you need this initial expression so let's say you had a problem i mean let's say the requirement is that you need a add function and whatever arguments are passed by the uh, client let's say every time you want to add 5 to the uh, i mean whatever result which you get you want to add 5 to it as well right so to do that i mean to you know uh, give such kind of capability this binary fold expressions were introduced so what you can do is you can do something like this if I always want to so this is my initial expression 5 then this is plus I mean operator then again three dots then operator and then arcs if I run it so let me show you what happened so this is how our fold expression was uh, expanded so as I told you like depending on the positioning of this initial expression uh, you will get the left or right fold expression since this is placed on left side this is how our fold expression was uh, expanded so first 5 and the value of arguments 0 is added then whatever is the result it is added to arguments 1 then whatever is the result is added to arguments 2 and whatever is the result is eventually added to arguments 3 if I reverse the positioning of this arcs and let's say 5 so you will see that now the addition will start from the right hand side so you can see here like the first the th this third argument and this fifth five are added then whatever is the result of this is added to arguments two then their result is added to arguments one and so on okay so again this initial expression is given so that maybe you have some requirement right that whatever result you get you always want to add some value to it right so it can help you fulfill such requirements and in this as i mentioned it just does not accept a simple constant i mean there can be any expression as well let's say i want to add you know uh, the whatever is the product of 10 and 20 okay so if i run this you will see how this you see how this fold expression is expanded so this can be this any expression okay this in it can be any expression not just a value and to mo read more about it i mean you can see here like uh, c++ has defined i mean on cpp reference you will find which what pack operator and in it means so operator as i told you can be any of the 32 binary operators pack is an unexpanded parameter pack this in it is an expression the only uh, constraint here is that it does not contain an unexpanded parameter pack and does not contain an operator with precedence lower than the cast at the top level okay now fold expressions are like very useful as you can see see on cpp reference also there are a couple of examples like let's say you want to create a you know um, a method which accept any kind of arguments and you know eventually return you the boolean or and of all those or logical and of all those so this is how you can do it using fold expressions similarly i showed you an example of addition function which they have shown here and fold expression has many uh, you know more applications like let's say you want to create a printer function which accept any type of arguments and any number of arguments and you know just see outs them to basically does a console output of them so again using fold expression you can simply do this similarly let's say you have a function which accepts a vector and any number of arguments which uh, whose values need to be inserted in this vector again instead of calling push back repeatedly for each argument what you can do is that you can use a fold expression okay here the operator is this comma operator so as you can see like fold expression has a very wide application and it helps you create concise code i mean you can see here right if you had to if let's say i had passed 10 arguments to this pushback vec function so i'll have to call maybe pushback 10 times right but with fold expression you can just do it in a single line 
so this is the advantage of fold expression and again uh, as i told you like there is unary left i mean right left fold expression so for some kind of operators it might not matter whether you are using a right operator a un i mean a right fold expression or left fold expression like for addition it does not matter uh, whether we started adding numbers from the left hand side on on the right hand side but for, for some operators it might matter for example for division operator like i have a unary right fold expression here for division operator and i have a unary left fold expression here as well for division operator okay so you can see i am passing the same arguments and what how it would be expanded for unary left it would be expanded like this like first 64 would be divided by 8 its result is 8 and then 8 would like whatever is the result of 64 divided by 8 would be divided by 4 so 64 divided by 8 is 8 and then 8 divided by 4 is 2 so the answer here is 2 but for unary right first 8 would be divided by 4 and whatever is its result that would then 64 would be divided by that result so 8 divided by 4 is 2 and 64 divided by 2 is 32 right so you can see like for some operators it matters i mean the result will matter based on whether you are using a right fold expression or left fold expression and you can see here as well that the output which we are getting are 2 and 32 but for some operators it might not matter for example for addition operator it might not matter for multiplication operator as well it might not matter right so i hope you guys like this video uh, do not forget to like subscribe and comment and i'll see you all next time